Aren't you glad to be in the Lord's house this morning? Amen. Would you? How much time we got? Are we? Hey! Won't you stand with us as we turn our minds and our hearts, lift our voices to our Heavenly Father? seated at this time we want to welcome you to Beth Seda Baptist Church my name is Brad Ball I'm the pastor it's my joy and privilege uh, to welcome you here in person and online if you're a guest with us here in person or online we just encourage you to text guest to this number 478-242-7200 all we're asking is for a name and an email address and if you do we'll actually donate five dollars in honor of you to our local joy clinic which ministers of people in our area that do not have insurance, health, or dental, but most of all, to share the love of Christ and the gospel with them. Also, if you're interested in a life group, uh, we do have three meetings on campus, and then we have one online uh, that I'm doing during the week. If you're interested in those, just call the office, and we'll get you hooked up. It's also Operation Christmas Child. Uh, you have boxes in the back, and we have more in the office. Uh, those are due November 22nd. If you're not sure what that is, what you do is you get a box or two. It'll tell you what to do. And uh, uh, and all God's people said, amen, amen. And so uh, you'll just put, uh, it'll tell you what you can put in there, but you just buy toys or uh, uh, items for kids. And actually those boxes will go all around the world uh, to kids and they don't have anything, but most of all, they'll share the love of Jesus and the gospel with them also. Also, just to remind you, our first responders uh, drive through appreciation dinner is next Saturday, 5.30 to 
Uh, so we're going to need help with that. We got people cooking, uh, but we're going to probably need help at least probably from about four o'clock on as we box them up because they're, it's going to be like our student uh, chicken fundraiser where you just drive through and we'll hand them a meal. Uh, and uh, so if you know anybody, law enforcement, uh, firefighters, first responders, any of those people, uh, tell them to come by. We just want to say thank you. And uh, if you can help in any way, uh, we would love to have you. And uh, like I said, we'll probably we'll have people cooking during the day. And then probably from about 4 o'clock on, we'll need some people here just to start boxing the meals up. And then we're just going to need people up to smile and say thanks and hand them to the people that come by. All right? Okay. You say, why do we do that? One reason. We're passionate about life change here. And we want to touch lives, and we want to help people grow in the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read one, ver not one verse, but let me read just a couple verses to you um, out of Proverbs 6. It says this, The Lord hates six things. In fact, seven are detestable to him. Arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil, a lying witness who gives false testimony, and one who stirs up trouble among the brothers. As I was reading that uh, yesterday, just remind me, that's kind of what's all going on in our world right now, what's all going on in our country right now, and what do we need to pray? We need to pray for God to move and work in our lives, work in our families, work in our nation, and ultimately work in this world and pray that righteousness and truth would be exalted that's that's what we're called to do live it pray it and proclaim it we can't control anything else folks i know you're trying with your clicker to control everything in the world right now but it doesn't work you and i got to tap into the king of kings and the lord of lords God's in control, folks. God is sovereign. God is always faithful. And he's full of mercy, grace, and truth. So let's keep praying. Keep exalting Jesus. Point people to the truth. Pray that God would move. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we again do thank you. Um, for another opportunity to come into your house. We again thank you for the freedom that we have in our country to come, gather, and assemble. May we not take that for granted, Lord. And so, Lord, we pray for your truth to be proclaimed here, all around this county, all around this state, all around this nation and this world. Lord, we pray for the gospel to be proclaimed. Lord, we pray for a revival and awakening to break out in our nation. Lord, we do pray for peace in our cities. We pray for our leaders that you might do a work in their lives and draw them to yourself today. May they hear the gospel somewhere, the true gospel, to where their lives will be radically changed. So, Lord, we give you this service. Be with Sam, anoint him and the band, and use them as they usher us into your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.
morning church honor him this morning when he rose up the sleepy he was putting on the lips our God is an awesome God it was thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist our God is an awesome God and the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of me it wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very soon, and so you better be believing that our God is an
All God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Sam and Ben, uh, for leading us to the Lord. If you're online, um, encourage them with some thumbs ups and amens and comments. Again, we're so glad to have you here this morning. Kids, it's time for Children's Church. Any kids? Praise the Lord for kids, amen? Amen. And uh, praise the Lord, uh, they're going to hear more about Jesus too. And so just again, encourage you, um, you can give through online text give, you can drop it off by the office, uh, you can put it in the mail if you're in the house, there's a box always on that table and there will be a box always at this door also uh, that you can give. And again, thank you uh, for your faithfulness to give. Uh, because that helps us keep doing ministry and support missions and spread the gospel uh, all around the world. And again, we're so grateful and thankful uh, for you at Bethsaida. So let's dive in. Uh, when I was single, I moved to Huntsville, Alabama, and I managed a uh, golf store right out of college. And in that store, if you don't play golf, don't worry about it, you won't know this brand but basically at that time there was a brand of golf clubs called ping and ping were the best at that time they were the best the most popular brand i mean they held their value everybody wanted them all the pros played them but what was amazing is also in that store we sold uh some knockoffs kind of looked like pings didn't have a big name brand, but could sell them at half the cost. And so some people like, man, I don't want to spend the big money. I just want something that looks like it. And so some people want a cheap imitation. Sometimes people want counterfeits. Now, if you understand currency in our, in our country, those people that deal with money study what? A real dollar bill so much when a counterfeit comes, they're like, oh, that's fake. That's a cheap imitation. Or you can go in furniture stores all over our country and you can walk in a store and you're like, man, that really looks nice. And then you start investigating and you find out it's uh, not real wood. Huh. It's just particle board or it's press board together. Or you can buy online everywhere uh, overseas and in stores, you can buy cheap imitations of glasses, clothes, handbags of popular brands today anywhere. You're like, hey, it kind of looks like it. You may want some Gucci glasses or whatever. It might not say that. It may say something similar, but it's like half off. You see knockoffs and replicas everywhere. So why are you talking about that today? Well, today we're going to look at the biggest cheap imitation and counterfeit that this world will ever embrace in the future. And so today we're going to look in this series, Revelation, the last days, we're going to look at the unholy trinity, the unholy trinity. Now let me recap where we've been in this series. Chapter 4, we looked at, got a glimpse of heaven and how, what do we need to do? We need to get good at worship here. Why? Because we're going to worship for all eternity. And we need to understand, we need to praise the Lord for His greatness, His perfection, and His holiness. Last week, we looked at countdown to chaos, and we saw the fifth and sixth trumpets in Revelation 9, and how God's judgment is painful and terrifying. Today, we want to look at the unholy trinity, and here's the take-home truth that I want you to get today is this. And this is what we're going to look at. In the end times, there will be a mockery and a cheap imitation of the trinity. There's going to be a mockery and a cheap imitation of the Trinity. Now, by the Trinity, I mean God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. One God, three persons. There's going to be a cheap knockoff and an imitation in the end, and that's what we're going to look at today. But let's go to Revelation 12. We're going to be in Revelation 13 also, but let's look at Revelation 12 to kick off. I want to look at three verses. Verse 9, it says this, So the great dragon was thrown out, 
the ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan. The one who, what, deceives the whole world and he was thrown to earth, band and his angels with him. So verse 17 and 18, let's read this. It says, so the dragon was furious with the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep the commands of God and hold firmly to the testimony about Jesus. The dragon stood on the sand of the sea. And so let's look at this unholy trinity. Remember Revelation? We got apocalyptic prophecy. You got some of that mixed up in what we're going to see today, okay? And so let's look at this unholy trinity. Number one is this. The dragon, Satan, is a counterfeit to God the Father. Satan is a counterfeit to God the Father. Now, in Revelation 12... Don't have time to get into it, but if you read it, there's a great battle between Satan and his demons and Michael and other angels, and Satan and his demons lost the battle. It says they no longer have any access into heaven. Now they're cast onto earth, and it says he's going to be what? The one who deceives the whole world. So he's a counterfeit. He is the great counterfeiter satan he's a great imposter he's a wannabe god he will never be god he desires to be worshiped he wants to be treated like god and he always has and always will be and he decides to counterfeit the triune god in the end times now if you read Old Testament, which we've been through, Isaiah 14 talks about how Satan was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be in charge. But you also got to understand, as 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 says, Satan is an angel of light. And he's a counterfeit. He's the father of all lies. He wants to usurp God's kingdom and make it his own. You need to understand, he's slick, he's powerful, <laughs> and he hates you and me. You just need to understand he's a counterfeiter, an imposter, imposter and a great deceiver. So that's the first counterfeit. Second is this. We're going to read about the beast from the sea. Now, who is this? It's the Antichrist. Is a counterfeit to Jesus. Okay, so you got God the Father. The counterfeit is Satan, the dragon. What's the counterfeit for Jesus? The Antichrist, which is the beast from the sea. So let's read Revelation 13, 1 through 10. Again, if you don't know where Revelation is, it's the very last book. Just go all the way in the end, turn back one, a few pages, and you're, you, you can't be far says this, And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads. Again, that's some of this apocalyptic literature. On its horns were ten crowns, and on its heads were blasphemous names. The beast I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a, like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. The, li the dragon, don't miss this, gave the beast his power, his throne, and great authority. One of its heads appeared to be fatally wounded, but its fatal wound was healed. Don't miss this. We'll come back to this. The whole earth was amazed and followed the beast. They worshiped the dragon, who is Satan, because he gave authority to the beast, which is going to be the, is the Antichrist. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter boasts and blasphemies, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months, which would be three and a half years. This is the last, the second half of the tribulation time. It began to speak blasphemies against God, to blaspheme his name and his dwelling and those who dwell in heaven. And it was permitted to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. It was also given authority over what? Every tribe, people, language, and nation. And all those who on earth will worship it. And everyone whose name was not written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slaughtered. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen. And if anyone is taken captive into captivity, he goes. And if anyone is to be killed with a sword, with a sword he will be killed. This calls for endurance and faithfulness from the saints. Now those animals that he mentioned there, we're not going to get deep. I, I really don't have time to get deep into this. 
into a lot of this apocalyptic. But just understand those animals that he mentioned there in the beginning are exactly resembles what Daniel talked about in Daniel 7 in prophecy. The four beasts picture four successive empires. You got Babylon, which would have been the lion. The lion. You got Medo Persia, which would have been the bear, and Greece is the leopard. And the fourth kingdom is the Antichrist, which Daniel referred to him as the little horn in Daniel seven. Now ten there always represents the totality of human military and political power. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene, and he's going to have all power. And he's going to be a very powerful person. Now, you need to understand, the word Antichrist is not found in the book of Revelation. It will always be referred to as the beast. Now, in Daniel, he's referred to the prince or ruler or little horn. In 2 Thessalonians 2, which we'll look at in a minute, he'll be referred to as the lawless one. Now, in 1 John 1 and 2, He's referred to as the Antichrist. Now, who wrote Revelation? John did, okay? In in Revelation, he refers to him as the beast. Now, what does the word Antichrist mean? It means one who is against Christ and one who is in place of Christ. Okay? The Antichrist hates Jesus Christ, and he wants to take his place. And he's going to war against Christ, and he wants to come on the scene and replace the real Christ. Now, he's a counterfeit to Jesus, and if you remember, Satan gave him his throne, his power, and his authority. What did Jesus say right before he ascended back to heaven? He told his disciples in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said unto them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. See, the, it, Satan is a great master, deceiver. See how he uses it? like, And he interweaves this through this, but he interweaves it throughout the whole world trying to convince people to buy in to the lie. Now, verse 3, it says he was fatally wounded but healed. We're going to read in verse 12 in a minute, their fatal wound was healed. And in verse 14, it says, wounded by the sword and yet lived. So why do you bring that out? The word there, wounded, is the same Greek word in Revelation 5, 6, and 9 where it talks about how Jesus, the Lamb of God, was slaughtered. Shed his blood for you. So what are you saying? That Hey, this Antichrist, they're going to fake his death. And it says what? Lived. That word lived is the same Greek word that's used in Revelation 2.8 where it talks about how Jesus resurrected. So what are you saying? They, Satan, the great dragon, the great imposter, the great counterfeiter, the great deceiver, what are they going to do at the end of times? They are going to have a counterfeit death and resurrection. This guy's going to come onto the scene, don't know who he is, and he's going to be some powerful guy, and they're going to fake his death, and he's going to come back to life, and everybody's going to drink the Kool-Aid. And believe it. Because he's going to have the ideals of politics, personality, and power. You need to understand the dragon, Satan, will work through the beast. Now, what is the, why does the beast come? The Antichrist has five purposes and many more, but let me give you five why he's going to come. Number one, he's coming to deify Satan. Antichrist is going to come on the scene and tell people, you need to worship Satan. Just as God the Father receives worship through the Son, the devil is going to receive worship through the Antichrist. See, this is an unholy trinity. It's a cheap imitation. It's a knockoff. So you need to understand, the devil always wants to be worshipped. See, the worship of God is going to be substituted for the worship of Satan. And see, what's going to be going on here is that the church is not going to be... You know, church is raptured out. Are there Christ followers here? Yes, they've been saved. They've been saved through the 144,000 
of Jews that got saved, the two witnesses came, and whoever those are, and people got saved. But there's not a vibrant church. There's not people of, you got a small minute, few hundred thousand amongst maybe a few billion people. So it's not going to be a viable church. And so the Antichrist is going to come on the scene is going to promote, hey, man, you need to worship Satan. You need to get this right now. And if you don't know this, you need to get this. You need to understand this. You need to understand worship of Satan is more on the rise than worship of God in America. And if you don't believe me, you go in, go look it up, go into any big bookstore in any big city, and I promise you, you will find witchcraft, occultism, Satanism, and you'll find rack after rack of books. You know how many you'll find on the gospel? About that much. So he's coming to deify Satan. Number two, he's coming to blaspheme Jesus. And he's going to blaspheme Jesus for 42 months. He'll slander and defame the name of God. Just like Domitian, the, the ruler of Rome at that time, demanded people to worship him and said, I want you to bow down to me and say, my Lord and my God. You need to understand the Antichrist has come on, come on to the scene like that. Let me read to you 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. You write it down and maybe read it later. It says this, <coughs> Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, is revealed. The man doomed to destruction, get this, he opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he sits in God's temple proclaiming himself that he is God. Now, I don't know totally what all that means. I don't know if he'll walk into the temple in Jerusalem or where that might be, and he's going to say, I am God. You don't need to worship Jesus. You need to worship me. You need to understand, one of the themes of this book is Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. He is Lord. Not the Antichrist, not Satan, but Jesus. You need to understand, he's coming to do this. Number three, he's coming to destroy the saints. So he's going to, God permits him to wage war against whatever Christ followers are on earth. And many will be killed for their faith. You need to understand during this tribulation time, if you give your life to Christ, you will be tortured for your faith, you will be persecuted, you will be burned at the stake, you'll be killed for the faith, or you'll be so... Isolated, you'll have no way to make it on this earth. You need to understand the Antichrist through Satan is going to massacre every Christ follower he can find. You need to understand Satan will drink his fill of the blood of martyrs during this time. So he's coming to destroy the saints. Number four, he's coming to dominate the world. It says he was given the authority over what? Every tribe? People, language, and nation. He's going to have control of everything. You need to understand, this guy is going to be slick. As slick can be. But he's going to be intimidating, and he's going to be very, very powerful. You will either get on board with the Antichrist, or you will be taken out. That's how it's going to happen. Number five, he's coming to delude sinners. Now, you need to understand this. Satan is not against religion. <laughs> In fact, he's the author of many false religions. See, through, relig through religion, he gets to channel worship to himself. See, the Antichrist is the counterfeit Christ. He will be the reincarnate Buddha of Buddhism. He'll be the Allah the Muslims are looking for. He'll be the Messiah that the Jews are looking for. He will delude sinners during this time and say, you need to worship me. Adrian Rogers said it like this. He says, the closer we get to the end of time, we will see more and more demonism, occultism, and witchcraft. He says, the Antichrist is the Christ of cults. Remember this about the devil. 
He doesn't want casualties. He wants converts, and he wants people to worship him. So what the Antichrist is going to do is he's going to come on the scene, convince people, and get people to worship the great dragon, Satan. And so you've got Satan. He's a counterfeit to God the Father. you got Antichrist. He's a counterfeit to Jesus Christ. Now the third of the trinity is this, the beast from the earth. Who's this? The false prophet is a counterfeit to the Holy Spirit. And so let's read Revelation 13, 11 through 18 and see what it says. Then it says, then I saw, what, another beast, okay, coming up out of the earth, and it had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon, which means he's going to be smooth, but he's going to have bite. And it exercises all the authority of the first beast, which would be in the Antichrist, on its behalf. And it compels the earth and those who live on it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. And it also performs great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven, uh, causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in front of people. It deceives, deceives those who live on earth because of the signs that it is permitted to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who live on earth to make an image of the beast. Don't miss this phrase. Who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He's going to be the great thing. Hey, man, he, this dude, he, he died and he rose. This is the Christ. We've all been looking. That's how they're going to sell it. Those other people, oh, they're just a bunch of frauds. And it was permitted to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast could be both speak and cause whoever would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And it makes everyone small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could, no, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, the beast's name, or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, because it is the number of a person. Its number is six six six. Now, why do you say this guy is the false prophet? Because if you read along, which we're going to, in chapter 16, 13, 19, 20, and 20, 10, it refers to this second beast as the false prophet. He's going to come and promote, <coughs> promote the power of the Antichrist. He's going to convince them to worship the Antichrist. He's going to be the chief leader of the most persuasive <laughs> proponent of satanic religion ever before. You need to understand that Antichrist is going to be a political and military leader. The false prophet, he's going to be the religious leader. And politics, you need to understand, this is all coming to place. It, politics and government and religion are all going to come together for this great utopia they're going to tell you about. But it ain't going to be no utopia. It's going to be a bunch of fraud and counterfeit and knockoff. Now, we've had false prophets. You read about them in the Bible all the time. You had them in the Old Testament. Elijah fought, fought them there on Mount Carmel. You had many others with Balaam and others in the Old Testament. Then you had them in the New Testament. They were seeping into the church. You had the Gnostics and the Judaizers that were infiltrating it. So there's been false prophets all around. You had Muhammad who had a vision from a cave which gave the Koran. You had Joseph Smith. If you don't know who he was, he was a con man, folks. He claimed to have a vision from God. I believe he got high. And he wrote the Book of Mormon. He basically plagiarized most of the King James Version, put some of this crazy stuff in because he claimed he had a vision from an angel called Moroni. Then you've had Charles Taze Russell in the late 19th century. What he did, he revived an old Aryan heresy which said Jesus is a created being. No, he's the son of God. So he created the Watchtower Society, and they'll come knock on your door and give you some literature called the Jehovah's Witnesses. You had Mary, Bakey, Mary, Mary Baker Eddy. 
she began what was known as Christian scientists in the late 19th century. She denied sickness and death are real because matter isn't real. I already mentioned Kool-Aid to say you may not know who he is. But in November 19, 1978, Jim Jones, a false prophet, got 909 followers to drink poison Kool-Aid because he convinced them that they were going to heaven. You got false prophets, always had false prophets. You need to understand, this is the last false prophet. This will be the last one to come on to the scene. And you need to understand why he's coming on the scene, because he's got five purposes too. Number one, he is deceptive. Man, he's going to run out just like Satan deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. Man, he's going to deceive the masses. He's going to be the master communicator. He will be control of all media, social media, anything with media, he will be control of. He will take over all the cable news, all the fake news, everything. He will control it all. And he will persuade everybody, you need to worship the Antichrist. He's come back from life. He's the one we've been looking for. He's the one that can save you from all the problems. So you need to understand the false prophet will be now the head priest in this new religion of the Antichrist. And it's going to be a new religion. It's going to be appealing. It's going to be enticing. You need to come worship us. You'll get all of this. You need to understand one of our memory verses for next week, Matthew 7, 15 says, Jesus says, watch out for the false prophets. We got them today, and there'll be one big one in the end. Number two, he, he, will, he enforces worship. He's going to enforce worship. He's going to enforce people to worship the Antichrist. He will be his mouthpiece. He will be his advocate. He will be the, the enforcer of this new cultic worship. And if you refuse to worship the Antichrist, it will be a capital crime. It says, you'll be killed. And then what they're going to do is they're going to make an image of the one who was wounded by the sword and came back to life, and there'll be a big image of the Antichrist. Sounds a little like Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 2. Remember that story? He thought, man, I'm the big bad emperor. Y'all create a huge big idol to me, statue, and everybody must bow down and worship to me. And you had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, we ain't bowing down to your gold statue we worship the lord our god they said well we're going to throw you in the fire and they says well whatever if our god wants to save us he will if not we'll go be with him and if you know the story they threw him in the fire and they turned up seven times hotter than ever the guys that threw him in the fire got killed and then shadrach meshach and abednego just walked in the fire and then Nebuchadnezzar looks down and is like, who's that fourth guy down there in the fire? And you need to understand that was the real Jesus Christ, I believe, walking in the fire, and he brought him out of the fire. And if you read the text, they, were, they didn't even come out with smoke on their hair. You need to understand this guy is going to erect a great idol and enforce worship. Chuck Swindoll said it like this, Blinded by their unbelief and sin, the world will easily fall prey to the false prophet's deceptive message and methods. Intellectually attracted to him, emotionally drawn by his appealing style, and convinced by his amazing signs, they will voluntarily submit and obey and worship. Man, this is going to be the great counterfeit in the end, folks. And he's going to be able to do this because another purpose he fulfills is he's what? He's a master of miracles. No more sleight of hand and tricks. No more uh, magic show. He's actually going to do a real miracle. You need to understand the devil has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. You need to understand the devil is dark and demonic and he can't do miracles. 
And in this end, it says, what is he going to do? He's going to call fire down from heaven. Now, what's that similar to? Elijah called fire down from heaven. But if you read Revelation 11, the two witnesses called fire down from heaven. So they're going to, hey, look at this miracle. Man, this has definitely got to be from God. Remember back in Exodus? In the beginning, the magicians did some of those miracles that Moses was doing. So the, it's going to be a master of miracles, and through that he's going to mesmerize the people, and they're all going to say, hey, this has got to be the way. We've got to go worship, the, we got to go worship this way. Fourth purpose is this. He controls the commerce and economy. You need to understand the anti-spirit is going to come up with a way to number everybody on planet Earth. Everyone will get a mark, it says, on their right hand or on their forehead. Now, what is that similar to? Well, if you remember, we've read in the Old Testament, the Jews, they would put what's called phylacteries. It was a small little box, and they would put it on their right hand, or they would put it like a headband and put it on their, right here in front of their forehead. And what was it? They would put in their little scriptures to remind them of God's word. What's going to happen in this day, folks, uh, is they're going to mark everybody. You're going to have to take a mark. Without the mark, you cannot buy or sell. To take the mark, you must worship the Antichrist. You need to understand, it's going to be a cashless society. They already have all the technology in place and have had it in place for quite a while, folks. And they tried to thrust it upon us in the beginning of this COVID saying there's no more change. Another lie from a pit of hell. You need to understand they're going to be very slick. And the anti, you need to understand the false prophet here, hey man, he's going to control all the commerce. No seal, you got no seal, no sale. If you've given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, hey, you need to understand you won't have to live during this time, but you need to understand those people that do live there, give their lives to Christ, especially during that first three and a half years of tribulation, hey, they will be persecuted for their faith. More than likely, they will be tortured. Or if they don't have the seal, you need to understand, they won't be able to go down to any store and buy anything. So what does that mean? They'll die of starvation. Because you're going to have to have the passport by committing to slavery and worship of the beast. And that'll be the only way you buy anything. See, Satan is going to mark his people during this time. Just like once you give your life to Christ, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit, praise God. Ephesians 1 tells us, the Spirit sealed. Man, once we get, again, here is the counterfeit. Give your life, follow the Antichrist and his false prophet and you will get this mark and you can buy anything that you want during this time or you can give your life to christ and be sealed with the holy spirit and spend all eternity in heaven so he's going to control the economy let's move on got to move on faster let me give you this last one here fifth purpose and i'm going to give you some application we'll wrap this up he leads everyone to worship a man and take part in a new one world religion says the one person with the number 666 is someone pretending to be God. He's going to have full power of the state. There will be no separation of church and state in this place. This time, government, religion will all be mixed together. And you will worship the Antichrist. And so you're going to have to take the mark and bow down and say, I worship Satan. I worship the Antichrist. And when you do that, sorry to say, that's unforgivable. Because once you go down that road, you won't ever give your life to Christ. At least we don't see it in, in Revelation. So you need to understand, there'll be a one-world government, a one-world economy, one currency. I don't know what it'll be. There won't be no more paper money. I don't know if it'll be Bitcoin or what it'll be. 
But they will come up with something, and there will be one religion, and it will all be formed by this counterfeit, unholy trinity. Now let me give you four thoughts of application, and we're wrapping this thing up. Because you're like, hey, that's a whole lot, right? Your boat is full, I know. Because my boat's been full all week. Now let me give you some application. Number one, the number of Jesus, the Son of God, is 888. And the Antichrist is 666. Now you understand numbers meant something to the Jews. Six is the number of man. Why? Because man was created on the sixth day. Seven is the number of perfection. Now, the Jews and others back then would use what's called gematria. And what they would do is they would find special meaning uh, to words and names, and they would give them numerical value. The only problem is some people like using this for trivia, and they try to use math for biblical interpretation. But what that tells us is Antichrist is the number of man. Seven reveals what? Perfection. So it tells us the Antichrist is not perfect. Jesus, his number is 888. What does that mean? Divine, eternal truth. 888 kicks 666 any day of the week. That's what it means. Because Jesus is is Lord and God, and the Antichrist is just a man, a sinner. And we'll lose in the end, because Jesus is the perfect God. Number two, stay away from speculations on who the Antichrist is on the meaning of 666. I I, I almost put out on the sign, today we're going to look at who is the Antichrist. But then I would have been a slick, false salesman because I don't know who the Antichrist is. And there's been more gallons of ink and print trying to determine who the Antichrist is. Twenty in November one, nineteen ninety eight, ninety nine. That on Newsweek, the cover of it was prophecy. And they did a story and found out that forty percent of Americans believed that hey, there would be a battle of Armageddon, but. 19% of the people believe that the Antichrist was somewhere on planet Earth at that time. You're like, is he on Earth? I don't know. I'm not to make predictions. It's not my job to figure out who he is. My job is to live for him. Which leads to the third point. Don't be deceived by the devil, but seek discernment from Jesus. Say, hey, this unholy trinity is not... Not here, right? No, it's not. But you need to understand, the devil, the slick one, the deceiver, the counterfeiter, the imposter, the angel of light wants to suck you in to some vortex of some deception. That's why we got to seek discernment from Jesus. And then number four, live for Jesus, encourage others to follow Jesus, and be ready for his return. Heard A.W. Taylor, someone quoted him today. He said, basically, life is like this. It's worship, it's work, and it's witness. Worship, work, and witness. That's what we're called to do. Live for Jesus. Point others to Jesus. You need to understand, just like a counterfeit $20 bill, there is coming one day. I don't know when. Could be soon. Could be long. I'm not the one to say Only God knows there will be a mockery and a cheap imitation of the Trinity that we worship, and there'll be Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. So you need to understand, folks, some people fall to counterfeits, and they think, man, they put all their trust in government and politicians. Other people put their trust in money and possessions. Other people put their trust in other things. But you need to understand None of those are the answer to man's problem. What is man's problem today? What will be man's problem what we just looked at in the end times? Man is a sinner. The answer is found in a bloody cross on a hill called Calvary. And there's an empty tomb of the Lord Jesus. And we've got to come to a place where we place our trust and lives in Jesus and his gospel. You need to understand, Jesus came to save sinners, not society. 
you got people shucking a social justice gospel that's telling you, you just need to get on the outside straightened out. Jesus didn't come to change society. He came to save sinners, which we all are. Don't buy into the lies that they're spreading today, and don't buy into the lies of what the devil will give you. You need to understand, the only answer to any of your problems, whether you're online, in person, doesn't matter. If you don't know Jesus today, you need to come to a place where you believe in the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You've got to believe in that. You've got to believe Jesus is the Son of God. Then you've got to repent. What does that mean? That's just a Bible word. Change of mind, which leads to change of attitude, behavior, and life. So it's a spiritual U-turn where you say, hey, man, I'm tired of going I have bought into the lie of the devil so long, I'm tired of that no more. And by faith, you put your, your, your life in the hands of Jesus, and you realize, Lord, I can't get there on my own. Lord, I realize what you did, and Lord, I call on you today. Lord, come into my life. Save me. I'm tired of buying into the lies. Would you be my Lord, Master, and Savior today? The scripture said, man, if you'll do that, if you'll call on him, and then Jesus says, now follow me. Now, a lie from the devil right here, you don't lie and you hear in person, many people bought into it. I'll just pray your prayer. Say, don't mind you praying a prayer. Just go through the motions, appease the preacher, appease my family, appease the Baptist, appease the religious people, and then, and then go live whatever you want to. Uh, that's a, another cheap imitation. Call on him. Ask him to save you. And realize Jesus will change your life for all eternity and now live for him. There's a lot of cheap imitations, folks. Call on the name of Jesus. Follow him before it's too late. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you today. Lord, I lift up every person in person and I lift up to you every person online. If you can hear my voice, whether it's live or later on, don't matter. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never come to that place, called on His name, I invite you to do that. It's not about walking an aisle. It's not about joining a church. Those are good things, but that won't get you in heaven. You've got to make a Surrender your life to Christ. So I invite you to do that right now. Just call on him and ask him to save you. If you don't know what to say, maybe pray this prayer with me in your heart. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, if you're by yourself, pray it out loud. If you're with a group, just pray it silently. If you're with us right now in person, just pray it silently. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've blown it. Sin against you. But God, I really do believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. He was buried in the tomb, but he rose again on the third day. He's alive and living today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now, to come into my heart, forgive me of all my sins, and be my Lord, Master, and Savior from this moment on. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, calling me, and accepting me. Jesus' name. Amen. All eyes closed. Nobody looking around. Anybody maybe pray that prayer with me this morning? If you did, just kind of raise your hand in the house. Anybody this morning? Hey, let me pray for every Christ follower. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for eternal life. Help us to live for you, Lord. Help us to point others to you so that they can experience eternal life in heaven with you. And don't have to experience the consequences of buying in to the lives of the unholy trinity. So, Lord, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do encourage you. Maybe you prayed that prayer with me. Encourage you just text SAVED to that number, 478-272-4200. If you did, man, we just want to rejoice with you. That's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your whole life. So we'd just love to rejoice with you. If you're like, hey, man, I know Christ, but I've never followed him in baptism. 
Just text baptism to that same number. Maybe you're interested in more about membership. Text member to that same number, and we'll get you a link and how you can go through the membership online. Also, if you have prayer requests, just text pray. It'll send you a link and put the prayer request, and we'll be praying for you. Uh, and we're here to pray for you and serve you in whatever way. Uh, band can come up, and I'm just going to give you two announcements very quickly as they come up. But students, we do have service tonight. Uh, all students, say so what students at 6 through 12, uh, grade 6 through 12, uh, we're in a series talking about identity, okay? And tonight I'll be talking to a topic that many adults even deal with, are you sure? Are you sure? So I encourage you to come out Wednesday night if you're free. Uh, we do have plenty of room in here for social distancing and service, or you can join us on Facebook Live. I'm uh, doing a series kind of going on along same tracks as Sunday morning. We're looking, uh, looking at what I call a look at the last book. And so we're looking at Revelation, but other texts that we can't look at on Sunday morning. So we'd love to have you join us. And uh, again, may God bless you. And let's uh, worship the Lord as Sam and the band lead us out. Amen. Brother Brad, thank you, sir. Church. Also want to thank my brother, Bruce. I'll give it up for Bruce. Thank you so much, Bruce.